In this tutorial, we will be discussing the effect of nuclear charge and its effect on the atomic radius. Electron configuration, element properties, and the periodic table. The number of valence electrons largely determines the behavior of an element. This includes both chemical and physical properties. Remember that the valence electrons are the outermost electrons. They're the ones that are actually doing the reactivity. The number of valence electrons follows the periodic pattern. The properties of the elements should therefore also be periodic. For instance, let's do the electro electron configuration of phosphorus. Phosphorus is right here. Element number 15, which means if it's neutral, it means it has 15 electrons. So follow our chart down, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that's 10 electrons here, we need 5 more, 3s2, 3p, we have 12 electrons here, we need 15 total, so we need 3 more electrons, so it will be 3p3. Let's look at phosphorus's placement. This here is called the P block because all of the elements, electron configurations in this area end in P, such as phosphorus. Now, phosphorus is one, two, three. It's the third element over of the P block, hence the P3. If we count down, one, two, three, it's in the third row, P block, third one over. So the electron configuration has a correlation to the setup on the periodic table. Let's try that again with nickel. Nickel is down here with 28. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. I'm following it down the alphabet chart. 3s2, this is 10, now we have 12, we're trying to get to 28. We're at 3s2, we go back up to 3p6, we now have 18, 4s2 first, that's 20, we need 8 more, we go back up to 3d10 but we only need eight. So it's, this here is actually called the D block. Nickel is in the D block, meaning its last one ends in D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the eighth one over in the D block. Now remember from our previous tutorial, one, two, three, four, it's, it starts on the four, the D block starts on the fourth level rather than the third level because 4s2 is actually more stable than 3d, which is why it's written 4s2, 3d8 and not the other way around. It, that's how it's entering the, entering the orbitals. So as a result, they've lowered the block one level to correspond with the energy levels. So there is a correlation between the electron configuration and the block in the periodic table. This is the S block, so all of these will end in S. This is the P block, all of these will end in P, the D block, and at the very bottom is the F block. Now let's talk about the effect of nuclear charge, which is often called Z effective. Z referring to the number of protons, the atomic number. The, this is the pull or the force an electron feels 
from the nucleus. So this is the positive-negative interaction. It's the attraction between the two. The closer the electrons are to the nucleus, the greater they feel the pull on the electrons. So the more of the proton positive-negative interaction that they feel, the opposites attract that they feel, and so they get pulled in tighter. The greater the Z effective, the more tightly the electrons are held and the more energy needed to remove those electrons. Electrons located farthest from the nucleus, which are the valence shell electrons, experience the least amount of Z effective of that atom. Z effective explains the reason that periodic properties and trends of the elements occur. So in general, if we're looking at the periodic table, here's just a generic picture of the periodic table, it increases as you go across the periods. It increases from left to right. And it decreases as you go down, meaning it's increasing if we reverse that as we go up. So the more we go diagonally towards fluorine, the greater the Z effective is going to be. So let's look at that a little bit deeper. The Z effective increases across the period going left and right left to the right owing to incomplete shielding by the inner electrons in atomic orbitals. So in other words, the electrons are surrounding the nucleus and they're shielding the outside electrons from that pull on the from the protons. However, as you go from left to right, that amount of shielding that's occurring gets smaller and smaller. The shielding abilities are the S is the greatest or the best at shielding while F is the worst. We can estimate what Z effective should be by taking the atomic number minus the inner electrons. For, an, for instance, lithium with the atomic number of 3 has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s1, while the inner energy level has two electrons, while the outer one only has one. So 3 minus 2, this is what we should be feeling. However, that's not necessarily the case all the time. If we look at this, lithium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, on the periodic table, these are the electrons, or these are the atoms up here on the top boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Technically, when we actually do the math of what it should feel, it should all be one. But the number increases as we go from left to right. It increases as you go across the period due to the ineffective shielding of the atomic orbitals, the subshells, within the period. The values observed are different than predicted values. The reason is the shielding abilities of the atomic orbitals or subshells are worse as you go from left to right. So this has a direct effect on the atomic radius, meaning that the more that the outer electrons, the valence electrons feel, so here's the nucleus, here's the electrons, the more that the electrons at the very, very end actually feel the protons, the more it's going to be squeezed in. So it's no surprise that the upper right-hand corner would be the smaller atoms, with the exception of helium and hydrogen, which only have one energy level. Notice that the general trend is not 100% true, but the general trend is that the closer you get to fluorine and neon, the smaller it gets because you're feeling more of that Z effective, the effective nuclear charge and it pulls it in. So there is a relationship here. The radii, the size increases going down a group due to the Z effective being less. As electrons are added to the different levels, different levels or the shells farther from the nucleus, there's a less attraction by the protons to the nucleus to the orbiting electrons the radii size decreases going across the period from left to right because the effective is increasing. 
the ineffective shielding of the orbitals, resulting in the increase in attraction by protons in the nucleus to the orbiting electrons. So once you get into the upper right hand corner, everything starts getting smaller as you get closer to there. So let's do some practice with this. Let's compare nitrogen and fluorine. Remember it increases, it, the radii decreases as you go from left to right and it decreases as you go from bottom to top. So it gets smaller as you get closer to this corner. So nitrogen or fluorine since fluorine is more to the right, nitrogen is going to be larger. Make sure you read your questions very carefully. Carbon and germanium. This is more towards the top, even though they're in the same row. Therefore, carbon is going to be smaller, germanium is going to be larger. Boron or aluminum, same ordeal. Boron is closer to the top. So boron is going to be smaller, aluminum is going to be larger. And then finally, lithium and potassium. Lithium is further up, so that means lithium is going to be smaller, while potassium is larger. And this explains the effective nuclear charge and the that relationship to the trend of atomic radius.